lugubrious, ostensible, ostentatious. As you ascend to higher levels of leadership in your executive career path, there is greater emphasis on your communication skills. And there's so much pressure at that level on demonstrating intelligence and professionalism by learning new vocabulary words. So in this video, what I want to share with you is how you can become more articulate. Five powerful secrets. Ostensible, ostentatious. Semesiology. Semesiology. How do you even have the time to sit and read and, and remember all of these vocabulary words? The good news is that becoming articulate is not at all about having extensive vocabulary. In fact, somebody who is articulate, articulate as an adjective, someone who is articulate means they are clear and distinct. And if you look at the etymology of the word articulate, the etymology goes back to the 1600s and it means to unite by joining together. So when you become more articulate, you are essentially joining together people, bringing people together through your words and the ideas that you express. So becoming articulate is nothing more than accurate communication. It means that you're able to express your ideas, your thoughts, all of that that is within here, you're able to express that without outside externally in a way that people can understand. So let's go deep into the content and let me reveal to you the five powerful secrets on how you can become more articulate. Secret number one is to communicate in terms of their values. The truth is when you're in a communication with another person, you feel you have something valuable to say, they might feel they have something valuable to say as well, but the fact of that matter is you both do. You both have something valuable to contribute in that conversation. And when you become more articulate, the goal is to have a dialogue with another person where there is exchange of ideas, exchange of thoughts, or exchange of responses as well. So then communicate in terms of their values allows that open lines of communication to occur. Because let's face it, when you both have something valuable to say and you communicate in, in terms of their values, the ultimate effect is that they're going to feel appreciated for who they are and understood for who they are as well. And the moment that the one that you're communicating with feels understood by you, feels that you are serving them, feels that you're fulfilling what's most important to them, they will open up to you and they will be more open to hearing your ideas. They'll be more open to receiving your thoughts as well and your recommendations. And they'll be more open, open to seeing you as somebody who is more friendly and trustworthy. And if you think about it, into your own experiences, when you were involved in a conversation with somebody and maybe they initiated the discussion with you and they were very attentive to your needs. They were very sure to communicate in accordance to what was your primary level of importance and they understood what you needed. They really understood what was what you cared about most and they communicated in those terms. Isn't it true that in that moment you really feel heard and understood? And in that moment you're also more likely to receive their ideas. You're more likely to be open to what they might suggest and you're more likely to stay engaged in that dialogue for longer. Right? So the, tr the, the truth is the same as well on the other side of it. If you're the one speaking and if you're the one initiating a conversation, all you have to do is, number one, first secret, communicate in accordance to their values and you can have that same effect. Secret number two is to create dialogue. A dialogue is when, for example, you initiate a conversation and then the other person is listening. They listen for a while and that's your moment of articulation. Then your communication partner, the other person, they respond to it. And as they're responding, that's their moment of articulation and you're listening. And as you're listening, you're understanding what they're saying and then you respond and you respond to what was just said, and now this is your second moment of articulation, and so on. So there's this back and forth, and that is what a dialogue is. Now, a dialogue is extremely important to become more articulate. And the reason why is because as you have a dialogue, the other person is giving you feedback. Did they understand it? Did they arrive at the same conclusion? Were they interpreting it the way that you intended it to be interpreted? And that feedback is really important and very valuable in order for you to iterate and have iterations of your responses so that you become more and more articulate as the conversation progresses. And it's really important because the opposite of a dialogue is called an alternating monologue. A monologue is when, for example, you're the only one that's speaking and you're expecting them to listen only. And and there's the absence of that feedback response from them. And absent that feedback, maybe in that moment you might be thinking that you were articulate, you might have been feeling that you, you articulated that strongly, but there wasn't that feedback. And at the end of that whole discussion, that whole monologue, if the other person gave you feedback and they decided that no, they disagree, that you weren't articulating your ideas, then that conversation becomes meaningless. It's not as meaningful as it could be when you have that feedback. 
So creating the dialogue will allow you to be able to, in those moments, progressively increase and become more articulate in the conversation. Because it's possible that the, the discussion could last for several minutes or 30 minutes or maybe 60 minutes, that whole discussion. And the start of the conversation, when you're just getting a feel about who they are and you're trying to get to understand what their needs and wants are, maybe in the beginning you kind of feel like you're not as articulate as you can be. But you're going to notice through this feedback and through a dialogue and feedback and iteration that your articulation goes up and you can have that feedback on how to adjust your conversation style or maybe adjust what you're saying or maybe come at it from a different angle and so on. Right? So this feedback through dialogue is absolutely crucial to becoming more articulate with that communication partner. And when you are having that dialogue, the mindset is to seek to understand, to understand their perspective, to understand what's important to them, to understand just like secret number one, to understand what are their highest values. What is important to them? What are their top priorities? What are they looking for? What is the outcomes they want to produce? Right? To really seek to understand. And seeking to understand could mean that you're asking great questions to really uncover the heart of it, what it is they're looking for. And through that process, you're really enriching that dialogue of feedback and you're really giving yourself an opportunity to iterate and become more and more articulate as the conversation progresses. Secret number three is to convey congruence. What is congruence? I talk about this a lot as well. Congruence means that your thoughts, your words, your actions, and your perceptions are in unison. Which means that, for example, with words, you're not saying one thing and then doing something else. Or you're not thinking one thing and saying something else. Or you are not saying something, but your body language says something completely different. So this is unison. Congruency is really important because the other, on the other end of the receiving line, whoever you're communicating with, they want to know that you mean what you say. They want to know that your word is your flesh. They want to know that you mean it. They want to know that you are wholeheartedly expressing that, especially when it comes to offering help, when it comes to demonstrating care, when it comes to really creating a partnership or a collaboration. They want to know the heart of who you are and if you really mean it. Right? So this is why conveying congruence speaks really loudly in your articulation as well. Because even if the words you're saying are tending towards a certain outcome or a certain intention, if the words you choose say one thing, but your thoughts and your body language and your perspectives are completely different, that energy gets conveyed outwards as well. And people can pick up on it. They're going to sense that there's something off, but they might not be able to put their finger on it. But if you desire to build meaningful relationships or maybe successful collaborations, the con congruence is extremely important. So let me demonstrate an example of what incongruence could look like. Like, let's say I am meeting you for the first time and, I am and my words are demonstrating care and thought towards meeting you and getting to know you, but my body language is incongruent with it. So it could look like something like this. Hi, how are you? How's your day? That's wonderful, wonderful. So what are, you, what, are your, um, what are your top priorities? And you can see what's happening is that I'm turning away from you because I am getting ready to go somewhere else or maybe I'm in a hurry or I feel some pressure and I'm hoping that your answers are shorter than, 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 than what will keep me behind. So if I'm turning away from you, my words demonstrate care and concern and, and pleasure to meet you, but my body language doesn't. So that's an example of how there's an incongruence between communication and articulation is nothing more than accurate communication. The accuracy of your communication goes beyond the words that you choose to use. It is also congruency, thoughts, actions, perceptions as well. If you're a team leader or a corporate professional and you're listening to this and you're wondering, yes, this is exactly the skill set that I'm realizing that is going to be important in my leadership. And you're wondering, how do I implement this? How do I implement these principles and these lessons? How do I, how do I implement that and integrate that into my performance at work? And you want some help with this. Then I invite you to work with me. Below this, there is a link in the description and that link is an application for you to speak to a member of my team. And this is where we're going to explore whether or not it's the right fit for us to work together. And if it is, you're going to be invited to join my mentorship. And in my mentorship, this is where I help you to implement all of these principles in communications, articulations, in leadership, and also career growth principles as well, so that you can step up into the leader that you desire to be in your industry. So if that's you, click the link below and I look forward to seeing you on the inside. Secret number four is to consider your lexicon. So what is lexicon? There are three sides of lexicon. The first side of it is the concordance of a person. The second side of lexicon is language. So which language are you communicating in? And the third side to lexicon is a particular branch of knowledge. 
So all of these three things make up a body known as lexicon. So consider your lexicon. And this really means it really boils down to your accurate choice of words. Now, I mentioned earlier in this communication that your articulation, becoming more articulate, goes beyond the right choice of words. It does go beyond that. But it is still important to have the right choice of words. So what is that? Because articulation is accurate communication. So do your words accurately convey the dynamicity of your ideas? Do your words accurately convey how you feel about certain things? Do your words accurately convey the seriousness or the profoundity of the situation? Do your words accurately describe what you're seeing or the vision that you want to put out there into the world? So this is your lexicon. And as you're choosing your lexicon, consider those things, the concordance of the people that you are speaking with, the language in which you are communicating in, and again, any particular words that are related to the branch of knowledge that you are specializing in or that your team is specializing in and so on. So consider that. So how do you build your lexicon? Right? How do you build that lexicon? And one of the most important ways to build a lexicon is to read great literature from individuals who have great lexicon. Right? So this is where you're reading great literature, flowing and putting into your mind great content so that your well is never empty. Because in those moments where you need to articulate and become more articulate, sometimes you want to draw from your mind, but you cannot draw from an empty well. So how do you ensure that you have a wealth of knowledge, a well of great content that you can draw from that is never empty? And the greatest way to do that is to ensure that your well is constantly filled. So you fill your well by reading great literature. And an example, one of my favorite literatures is this, which is the Encyclopedia Britannica. And there are great authors that wrote a syntopicon, and these are the great ideas of the Western world. So for, this is an example of great literature. And I'm not saying that you have to read the encyclopedia, the whole encyclopedia. Just because I've done it, it doesn't mean that it makes sense for you. But as you're reading great literature, choose literature that really resonates with you. Choose literature that really develops your mind, that helps you to develop your mental models, and more importantly, that gives you a great context in which you can communicate as well. And when you read literature from great writers like this, it inspires and it wakes up your own lexicon as well. So that is secret number four. And finally, secret number five is to command phonetics. So what is phonetics? Phonetics is the speech sounds. All the sounds that you make with the consonants and the vowels, your vowels are A, E, I, O, U, and your consonants and all the other letters of the alphabet. So these make up your speech sounds. So when it comes to articulating the phonetics, you have an anatomy that is perfect for phonetics. If you look at the anatomy, anything between your lips and your vocal cords down here, that is the perfect anatomy for articulation. So the articulators are the parts of that anatomy that lend themselves to speech sounds. Those, so these include your lips, your upper lip, your bottom lip, your teeth, your gum ridge, which is the gums right behind your two front teeth. It is also your hard palate, your soft palate, your pharynx, your uvula, and also the glottis, which is the space between your vocal cords at this level. So all of these parts of the anatomy make up your articulators and you exercise the muscles of your articulators to be able to produce the sounds that are accurate to the words that you are conveying. Now, this is important, especially now, given that it is a hybrid workplace. You have some people who are in person at the office. A lot of people are still working from home and they're joining meetings by video. And when you're on video, you use a microphone and that microphone sometimes dampens your voice. It sometimes changes the way that you sound. It sometimes muffles it as well. So this is even more important in conversations like that, where you have technology in between and you want to be able to command your phonetics. So you might be thinking to yourself, well, English is my second language. And as a result of that, when I produce these speech sounds, I don't sound like a native speaker in English. And if that's you, then if you would wait until the end of this video, I have some information on that for you in terms of accents. So with that, back to phonetics. Commanding your phonetics is important in person as well, not just on video. It's important in person too, because the greater you are able to command your phonetics, the more authoritative your vocalizations become. And especially when you are speaking to higher ups, when you're speaking to senior executive leadership teams, collaborators, investors, stakeholders, and so on, they want to know that your vocalizations command the authority that your position does. And this is the best way to have a match between your position as a leader in this industry and the authority you want to have in your organization. Now, as I promised you earlier, I want to talk a little bit about the accent. 
if you're listening to this and English is not your first language and you're concerned about the way that you articulate in your phonetics and you're saying to yourself, I don't like the way that I sound or I need to sound different, I'd like to sound more accurate, then stay tuned right after this. I have another video where I talk about the accent and what do you do when you want to change your accent. That one is coming right up next. I'll see you there. Semasiology, the branch of knowledge that deals with concepts and the terms that represent them. It's also known as onomasiology. When will you ever learn these things? And when will you ever use these words anyway?